many books on your shelf do you have that you probably don't even read? A lot. Or that you've read and you have no intention of rereading and I'm not sure if you are a collector and you like just having them on your bookshelf, which is totally fine, but I am a minimalist and so I went through all of my craft books this weekend and really asked myself, do I still want to hold on to these because books, as you know, are very heavy. <laughs> So here are the 17 books I got rid of and why. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. I'm a booktuber and author tuber and I also love talking about TV. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. You can't see it, but there's a huge stack here of 17 books that I am going to purge. And the reason I purchased these in the first place is because I was looking for books that would help me with craft, that would help me with publishing, that would help me with editing, revising, just in general, becoming a better writer, which I think all of us are trying to be. And as writers, we obviously gravitate towards books. Now I bought physical books because I do like to make notes or um, highlight things or, and have a physical book to reference. However, books are heavy and I no longer want to lug all of these around. So I really tried to ask myself, which ones do I want to keep? So here's the process I went through in deciding which ones to keep. I really asked myself, do I like this system? And will I keep referring back to it? And is it something that has so much great information as a reference novel, the reference book that I can't possibly get rid of? Them? So these are my top 17. And the first one is the 101 Habits of Highly Successful Novelists. And these are basically just sort of quick blog posts and advice. And if I were you, um, if any craft book, if I were starting over again, I would not buy physical books. I would first just check out the Kindle or see if I could check it out for my library first and just make a sort of file that keeps all of the great tips and advice you hear from different authors and keep that in one file all by itself. So this I already read and I will never reread it again. So it's going in the to be donated pile. John Truby, now I went to his three day workshop. I went to two of his workshops actually, and he's really good. But for me, the system that he has is, and it's not that he writes, he talks only about screenplays. It's an amazing system and he's a really genius storyteller and a great instructor, but this isn't something that really resonated with me in the way he does stories versus Michael Haig. I'm probably saying that wrong. I love his system and that really spoke to me and I've been to his workshops and that for me was a better reference novel, a book that I wanted to keep. The next one is Blogging for Writers, and I believe this is written in 2013 or 2012, and it's beautiful inside, right? It looks like a magazine, and it has pretty layouts and examples, but it is like the stone age in terms of giving out advice and what to do. So this was really great seven years ago or 10 years ago, whenever it was printed, and it's no longer useful. Same thing with this, The Insider's Guide to Publishing. This was actually from Writer's Digest and it had a great cover and it promised that it was going to teach a lot of great things, but it was, I don't wanna say fluffy, but it was more academic in nature uh, for like PhDs to be published. So that's just not anything that I'm interested in. Novel Shortcuts, 10 Techniques That Ensure a Great First Draft by Laura Whitcomb. Same thing here. Uh, this really didn't speak to me as much as it was just a long laundry list of something you might have a discussion with someone who could just check off a couple things on your list just to make sure that you are um, on the right track. So the 10 techniques are really just 10 checklist items. So I've made notes, so you don't really need the book ever. Um, Scrivener, apparently I still have the receipt. Uh, this is Scrivener Absolute Beginner's Guide. As you know, I passionately hate and dislike using Scrivener and I have found it to be cumbersome. I really wish somebody, somebody would come out with something better, uh, but I have spent thousands literally in pursuit of trying to learn Scrivener because I thought maybe I just need to learn it better. 
but I don't. I just don't like it. So I'm obviously getting rid of this book. And in fact, that book is pretty old. Um, writing the TV drama series. I love TV, obviously, because most people are just booktubers and author tubers, but nobody adds in TV. So I love TV series and I love how TV shows are written today. And I think the quality is just getting better and better. So I learned so much from this book about how to right and um it had a lot of great information the only problem is i don't really want to write tv and even when i do write my drama i don't write pure drama so this is a great read but i don't need it for a reference manual um the power of pov make your story come to life i'm not really sure what i was hoping to find out of this book it is a basic primer on what is pov and it had a couple good examples on a good way to write POV and how to make sure you're not writing in the passive voice. Uh, but overall, I think that if you are a super beginner, this is great, especially if you're not sure what POV to pick out. But if you've been writing for a while and um, you know, then this is probably uh, a little too beginner for you. Now, the next three books, I am not going to keep and this is because they're all about YA. So I have one YA story out and I really don't have any desire to write YA anymore. So writing irresistible kid lit for some reason this book was so popular. Um, and I say for some reason because it was good, but it was an amazing. Um, so I will tell you that this book, which I don't even like the cover, but I went to a workshop by Cheryl B. Klein in New York and it was amazing. So she gave us all of her notes, which pretty much covers everything in this book, but ad infinitum. So if you could ever take a workshop with Cheryl, I would highly recommend it. Uh, she's very organized and she is able to describe to you exactly what she likes and doesn't like, especially if you are hoping to be published by her. And last is Writing and Selling the YA Novel by K.L. Going. And um, this was a beautiful cover. It was amazing and great, uh, but it didn't really have a lot of information in it. So this is, I would say, just a really long blog post to me. Um, if you were thinking about writing YA, uh, these are probably a good triple stack of books to have. Next are two, I shouldn't say two, three books of systems that just don't work for me. And I don't think they're bad systems, just to be fair. Um, I think they just didn't work for me and like how I think and how I'm organized. And the first is Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. And don't feel bad like if you don't like it. Like forever, I just felt terrible because everyone talked about Save the Cat. I took courses from instructors that always talked about beats and I just didn't get it. Like it didn't resonate with me and I couldn't think like that. Like I think very linearly and um this is very uh whatever the opposite of linear is right it's like did you have this speed and that story and i it just i don't like it <laughs> so i am getting rid of save the cat same thing with the plot whisperer now the Plot Whisperer by Martha Alderson. Martha is wonderful. I did take a workshop online with her and I forget her name. There was an agent and her and the agent had, uh, the agent was amazing, like so spot on on what you need and what should be included in there. And then Martha comes along for whatever reason, they've paired up and Martha came along with her system on the Plot Whisperer and it was basically same thing. I just didn't, it didn't resonate with me. I just didn't really like this system. So you can see here, this is supposed to be your plot plot or maybe you can't see the lighting but uh it arcs up it goes down and then it goes to the end so I, this just didn't again make any logical sense to me i'm sticking with the kathy yardley system which does make sense to me we both think like planners and schedulers and in spreadsheets um now stephen james because i do think so linearly i don't again i think that there's a lot to be learned from trying different craft techniques out and stephen james is notoriously famous for pantsing 
Like 100%, that's what he does. He doesn't know how the story is going to turn out. He writes to be excited himself by the plot and his characters. And um, and I actually just really like him. He's very, even though he is like that when in his writing, he's very organized in his teaching. So Stephen James teaches the one day Mastercraft classes before Thriller Fest. If you were ever able to take one of his workshops, you 100% should and they are amazing i think i've taken two of his um but again i got a lot of great information out of here i actually got more i shouldn't say more i got better higher quality information from him from the workshop plus you get the chance for him to critique a few pages for you and that to me was um extremely valuable uh so again i probably won't refer back to that as much as i would refer back to the personal notes that i took from his workshop uh the last two are kind of what i thought would dig into helping me make better characters so the first one is bullies bastards and bitches how to write the bad guys of fiction by jessica page morell and this was not a bad book um but it was okay, right? Like it didn't, I feel like the, I've taken another class online through, I think it's writers.com, don't quote me on that. And it's called uh, Antiheroes. And that course pretty much said exactly the same thing that was in this book. Um, so, you know, it's just, the point is you just have to shape a really good backstory for your villain and make sure they have a plausible solution versus like the horror movies where you have Attack of the Killer Spiders, right? Like, do they really have a purpose in life? No, um, other than that, they're hungry. So that is why I don't really need that book. Um, and the same thing, The Woman in the Story by Helen Jacy. This book uh, didn't, I don't know, maybe because I'm such a strong feminist, I thought it would give me such a great perspective on how to write women and how they could be portrayed. Um, and this book was just uh, like... I don't even know what to say because I don't want to say anything too negative, but I didn't get anything out of it for me. And the reason I didn't get anything out of it is because it really didn't help me at all with specifically with how to write the characters. Now, again, all of these books, none of them are bad. Um, they just didn't work for me and sort of my linear maybe way of thinking or I thought that they were great. I got the information I needed. I took some notes and I moved on. So those are the 17 books that I am passing on. You know, I think the best thing that you can do is to not mindlessly carry things around anything in life from one apartment to the next apartment and moving it around and organizing it. Like if you haven't picked up a book in a year, and I can honestly say I have not cracked open the book of any of these or the cover of any of these books in a year, it's pointless for me to just keep carrying this around and around and around. Um, now, if it's on your Kindle, probably not a big deal. Uh, but for me, I like physical books and that's why I try to do a cleanup every once in a while. So what's left on my bookshelf, if you are wondering, is over here. And these are the books that I really like and I do refer back to and I make sure to open them once a year. How do I know I open them once a year is because what I did this time is I put a little green sticky inside of all of them and as soon as I, and it just says 2018, and as long as I open that book once in 2018, I took that sticky out and I put it in the garbage. And so then at the end of the year, I will know which books I didn't touch and didn't open because they will still have their sticky inside of them. All right, I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Bye.